AI literally just created 18 different models for me, machine learning models, and this is insane. What I'm about to share with you, I'm now introducing today my first H2O machine learning agent. This is my first machine learning agent that I've written with AI, and it does it literally does machine learning for me. Super excited about this. I'm gonna share with you what we're what we're I've been working on. So let me scroll to the top here. This is an AI that I just built that literally does everything I need to do for machine learning. It executes machine learning code. It created all of these different models for me here recently. This is, and it ranks these using what's called a leaderboard. It creates the AI machine learning code for me. All this stuff takes me tons of time to write. AI wrote all this code for me. It even recommends what machine learning steps that I need to perform. And it, it creates a full log and a full uh, report of everything that it just did for the machine learning to build the model and to test it and to, and to get, and if I want to access that model. So that's what we're going to be covering today. Very cool stuff. I got three things. So make sure you stick around until the end. I'm going to first introduce you to my new AI data science team of co-pilots, and I'm going to share how you get access to this new machine learning agent. Okay. The second thing, we're actually going to create a machine learning agent that you're going to run on your data. I'm going to show you how to do that, how to access all the information here and get it running so you can start doing this yourself. The third thing, we're going to be working on this churn data set today. So that's what the business problem is. We're going to have a churn data set and we're going to apply this new AI machine learning agent to build a churn model that's going to predict churn and it's going to even explain the churn and we're gonna uh, see how it does all that stuff. So very cool stuff. Get started here. What we need to do first is I need to introduce you to the AI data science team. So let's go over to, uh, actually, let me pull it up over here. This is my AI data science team. So you're gonna go to this link here and just Google AI data science team. Actually, I'll put a link in the video notes to all the resources that I cover here today. This is where you're going to get access to this new machine learning agent. I've just added it in here to the AI data science team. Before we dive into that though, make sure when you go to this link, give this repo a star. That helps me a ton and it also keeps you in touch and it helps you find this package faster. So that way when I introduce new things, it'll actually recommend to you and, and, and tell you about this. Okay, so let me refresh this. We got a brand new logo, AI data science team, my super bot here that's gonna help you do AI, common AI task 10X faster. That's the goal. So that's what we're doing. What this AI data science team though is, is it's a full army of agents that you can just pull off the shelf when you need to use these to speed up your tasks. We focus on the, the repetitive tasks that we're constantly doing so that way it can free us up to do the more um, important stuff, which is higher level thinking. All right, so again, make sure to give us a star on GitHub, it means a lot to me. And then this is what's inside. I'm building this, it's a work in progress, and I've added a ton of new agents. I just actually got this one, the machine learning agent, the first machine learning agent is completed. I've also started introducing now multi-agents, which actually combine some of these agents together. This is a SQL and a data visualization agent. And coming soon, I'm gonna be introducing apps, so simple apps that you can use to interface with these agents and just get stuff done faster so you don't have to code that up yourself. These are the agents that are available now. I do need to add the machine learning agent. I haven't even done it yet because I'm just, you know, <laughs> just literally like introducing this right now. But that is AI data science team. So go to the GitHub repo, give it a star. The next thing, uh, once, once you do that, this is how we're going to use it today. So let me um, clear it out and restart this. So make sure, actually, before we dive into the libraries, how do you get this code that I'm going to share with you today? So you're going to join my AI tips newsletter. Pause the video right now. Join my AI tips newsletter. That's there's a link in the video notes. When you do that, you're going to get access to not only the code that I share today, which is right in here, this 009 H2O machine learning agent folder, but you're going to get all the previous, all, all the previous AI tips as well. And why is that important? Because this is my entire journey so far of building data cleaning agents, feature engineering agents, data wrangling, SQL, et cetera. So make sure you, you pause the video, join the AI tips newsletter. What I'm working out of is this 009. We're gonna make these folders here, so don't worry too much about those. I'll explain to them, but the, the important one is this file here, and then also the data set. We're gonna be working out of this churn data set. Um, okay, so once you get access to the code, next thing, you're going to uh, do a pip install with this line of code here in your terminal, and that's going to add the AI data science team. So you can run this line of code down here. All right, so let me import this, import the libraries. What I'm doing 
Langchain OpenAI, you need Pandas, you need H2O. So if you don't have H2O, that is a high performance machine learning library. Uh, it's really cool, I love it. Just do pip install H2O to get that added to your computer. And then these we're gonna use as well as my AI data science team, the new ML agents module. And we're gonna use the H2O ML agent, all right? We're gonna do a little bit more setup too. I got the path, which is gonna point me to this folder or point, point the Python script to this folder and then the data frame. So this is what I'm gonna be loading in this churn data set. It's located in our data folder. I'm just gonna run this real quick, show you what the data looks like. We do have a churn data set. These are each customers. And if you scroll over here to the right, we have whether or not they've churned, no or yes. And you can see we've got a bunch of different features about those customers, things that are predictive, like what contract type do they have? What, how, many, how much have they paid? What are their total charges? What are their monthly charges? Those, those types of things. I can influence churn, all right? So we're gonna see how to create a bunch, a bunch of, you know, tons of models on this in literally like 30 seconds. So next thing. We're going to set up our LLM. So I'm running all of this code here. What I want to share with you is we are going to be using OpenAI today. Now, you don't have to use OpenAI. I'm going to create a new video on how to do local LLMs, okay? But until I do that, I suggest you use OpenAI. You're just going to go to their service, sign up for an API key. Once you get your API key, you just plug that in here, and you don't need to run this line of code. That's for me because I have my API code stored in a file because I don't want you to see it. <laughs> so um, you're, you're not going to run this line. You're going to put your API key and run this, this line, and then the rest of the code will run for you. As far as the LLM setup, so this code here, I just ran that, and I want to point out what model I'm, I'm going to be using from OpenAI. I'm using their GPT-40 Mini. It's super cost effective. I literally pay, I run it a ton, and I pay maybe a dollar a month in, in, in charges. So very cost effective, very fast, and very good. We're going to set it up for logging. So we're gonna log a bunch of functions and stuff over here. And I'm going to point it to where I wanna store those functions. So that any of the Python functions, the AI functions that it creates, I'm gonna store those here. Here's an example of one that we're gonna create. And then the, the, the models are gonna be stored in this folder called H2O models. That's what this is gonna do down here, all right? And then we just set up our, our ChatGPT model and we're ready to start creating the agents. All right. So this is the fun part, this is awesome. We're gonna create an HO ML agent and it's just literally one line of code. It creates this agent for me. So I ran this, we're gonna give it our LLM model. We're gonna tell it log true and then our log path is gonna be set up to log our functions over here and our model directory path is gonna be set up to store our models over here. All right, it's gonna go through these steps, recommend ML steps. This is like an expert agent. So it is knowledgeable on H2O. I've given it access to the H2O documentation, given it access to a bunch of stuff. So that way it can basically replicate my knowledge of H2O, which I've been using for like 10 years. It now has access to information like that, okay? Then it's gonna create code for us, then execute the code. If that code fails, it will try to fix the code and then it will explain the code. So it's gonna report create a report for us, okay? All right, once we have it set up, now it's time to run the agent. This will take a little bit of time, so it's gonna run for about 30 seconds, and what it's doing is it's actually stepping through this right now. So right now we're in the recommend ML steps, and the agent's actually analyzing the data that we provided it. So I'm, get, I'm using this invoke agent method, and I'm provided it some data. I provided it some instructions and the target variable churn, okay? So what we're trying to do, or what I've asked it to do, is do a, make, make a classification model and uh, run for a maximum of 30 seconds. And that's just to keep it short. Normally in production, I'll, I'll run H2O for, for like five or 10 minutes, okay? So right now what it's doing is it's training the models. It's actually connecting to H2O server. It's executing the code. We're getting some diagnostics here, some outputs, and we're seeing you know kind of what's going on behind the scenes. Once this thing is finished up, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna be able to get a bunch of information about it. All right, looks like it's all finished up. Like I said, I set it up for 30 seconds and it's run through it. So what did it do? Let's first access some of the methods that we can like call on this ML agent. So we, I wanna get the, the leaderboard. The, fir the first thing that it's giving me here is all the models that it just created. And we can see they're ranked by accuracy, like AUC, log loss, et cetera. We got a lot of diagnostic information in here okay so the uh, next thing we can see this was the best model it had the the highest AUC and that is the model that it stored over here so if I look over here GBM underscore one auto ML it's this two 
225. I think it's, yeah, it's this one right here with the 111227. Okay. How did it create that? Well, we might want to understand what function it created. Look at this. This is stuff that like takes me a little bit of time to put together. In just a few seconds, it created all this code for me to actually initialize the NHGO session, collect the data, run through and implement some steps that the recommendation steps actually pick out like good, like intu not, not intuitive, but like very good settings for the H2O auto ML to run, the model directory, and then it knows how to output what, exactly what we need to log all this information. Okay. Next thing, let's check out the recommended steps. So what, what steps were recommended? I can get that here. And you can see, this is pretty cool. Like you can see step one, identify the predictors. So this is what it's, that recommendation step told the coder agent to, to, to implement, okay? Convert the response to a factor is something I always forget. It knows to do that. Set the maximum runtime. Well, it got, how did it get that? It's because I told it up here. Exclude deep learning. So deep learning normally inside of H2O, I've been using it for 10 years, deep learning models suck uh, inside of H2O algorithm. Uh, the, the GBMs, the XGBoost models, those are way, way better. So it knows to exclude those because I don't like to, to utilize those and then, and, and so on. So very cool, very powerful. We can get the full workflow summary. This is a brand new method. So if you wanna see all of the information, like the recommended steps, we've got a, rep a full report that we can collect, the training function, this is what that looks like, the path that it was stored at, the function name. So if I go here into this path, sure enough, that's what it created, the H2O function right there. The model path where it's logged here and the best model ID. So everything I need to you know, know exactly what this agent did. Uh, we can get the log summary, which is just some information about where things were stored. If and then the last thing here we grab is the model path. So this is really important because when you go into production, you need that model path for the best model, the one that your agent just built. So we have that. What can we do with it? Well, if I initialize an H2O session, and then if I load the model from that path, I now have that model right in here and I can start utilizing it. Okay, we can get the performance metrics from it. I can do predictions on it and get the predictions on the data on new data that's coming in. And I can even run explanations. So this is really cool. If you've never checked out the explain function, it's running SHAP, it's doing partial dependence plots, it's doing all sorts of very powerful explanatory diagnostics. Okay, so really, really powerful. Hopefully you see where I'm going with this project and I'm you know, getting ready to do some really cool stuff. I'm focused on machine learning and machine learning ops, so ML ops. My next steps are to develop ML flow agents, which is coming next. And then on top of that, if you want anything included, click this link here. Or actually, if you just go to my AI data science team, go up to issues and then create a new issue and you can literally ask for anything, you know, no limits. It's not to say that I'm gonna implement that if it's too crazy of a request or too, too time consuming or if it just doesn't make sense. But you can see I've got tons of requests in here. A lot of them come from me, but some of them come from different users and, and you can check those out. Okay, last thing. If you want to go further with me and actually learn how to do generative AI and combine that with data science for your companies, then I have a solution. I already taught 300 students in a brand new boot camp that is designed for data scientists to learn generative AI and how to apply this to their companies. So it's an eight week live boot camp with me, yours truly, where I teach you everything that I know about generative AI. So this is the curriculum here. I put a few bullets in here. Week one is a live kickoff and you learn how to use local LLMs uh, and get all the software and everything set up. Week two is retrieval augmented generation for data scientists. Why is that important? Because every company doesn't want just a gen generic LLM. They want uh, what I call domain specific LLMs that are trained on their knowledge. I show you how to do that in week two. Week three, we build a business intelligence AI copilot where we combine SQL and pandas and create a business intelligence tool. Week four is we build a full multi-agent customer analytics team that combines a uh, database specialist, um, a products specialist, and an, uh, a marketing specialist and actually creates basically like the entire customer analytics team. It's, it's awesome. Week five is time series forecasting. This is a multi-agent machine learning workflow. We're gonna learn how to integrate XGBoost and do forecasting 
with AI and actually create agents that do forecasting for you. And we move into production. So a week six, you're gonna learn AWS Bedrock, which is a which gives you access to cloud-based LLMs that many companies don't who don't want to use OpenAI, they will be comfortable using AWS. So you learn how to use AWS Bedrock, you learn how to create fine-tuned and rag deployments with AWS Bedrock in week seven, and then week eight, which is the, the culmination of everything, you learn how to deploy your application. So whether you got a job portfolio or you want to deploy AI apps inside of companies, you learn how to do that with AWS Cloud, Docker, EC2, and Nginx. So here's the link. You can check that out. It is a paid program, but it's awesome. It's amazing. It'll transform you. All right, guys, that's it. I will see you all soon. Take care.